Crafty friends and welcome to another American Crafts Design Team project. This week on the American Crafts blog we are focusing on cards in a bag. And so you can see the unicorn card there on my desk that has inspired the whole entire page. And I'm using some older Baker's Twine. It came in a package I think of 24 spools from American Crafts and I used the because I've been to this rodeo before, I know when you start using one color of twine, you're usually going to run out. Like, I just knew I was going to run out. So that's why I use the Baker's Twine at the top where the floral elements are going to go. Now, these are some new floral elements from American Crafts. And I love that they are all plain white because I get the idea that I can watercolor these to exactly match my project. So what I'm going to do is choose about seven, I think it's seven, so I have three of this larger size. And then this package has glittered. I get two of the plain, and they have a little bit of bling in the center. And then I get two more of the glittered ones out of that package, the smaller ones. And the awesome thing is that I was able to use the Kelly Creates Aqua Brushes the watercolor brushes that are for hand lettering. Uh, those are available at Michael's, here they are. And I'm going to custom color these flowers to match my project. So you can see I'm starting with the pink color, the magenta. So I'm thinking at this point that the color scheme for this layout is going to be magenta, cobalt, and turquoise. So I'm just coloring the center of these larger flowers with the bright magenta. I believe it's called Blossom. This color on the side of the pen is called Blossom. So you can see I'm using the Vicki Booten water brush to dilute the color a little bit so that it'll have a, a variation, like a gradient effect. So here you can see the finished hoop and how I created that embroidery looking hoop is I cut a cardstock stock circle. So it's a quarter inch wide ring and so I cut a circle at six and a half and six and a quarter and that made the ring. So I stacked about five of those rings and glued each layer and then I wrapped the American Crafts uh, twine around it. Now you can see I'm going about making the inside of the dream catcher and I'll have a link. Uh, I got this, there was an idea on Pinterest. I saw a unicorn. It was a little bit different though so I created my own variation of it but I'll leave a link down below in the description box so you can check that out. So most of the lighter pink baker, baker swine, the striped baker swine that I'm using right now, most of that is on the upper side of the ring is going to be covered with the florals once I get them all wa watercolored to match my project. So here I'm just winding around, I'm looping the baker's twine around the ring, and I'm not pulling too hard because this ring is made out of cardstock and I'm gonna, I don't want to like bend it permanently. So I'm just lightly, and here you see the hole wasn't large enough to put the whole spool in, so I just wound some off and, and cut it. So here I'm just continuing to wind around and I didn't measure or anything, I just kind of eyeballed it. Now, what, however you wind this around, it'll, it will look good. So I just want enough to give enough texture to the inside of the dream catcher. So I'll just keep going until I think that it looks good enough and I'll tie it off in a knot so that it won't unravel. And I'm using Scotch Quick Dry Glue just to, that's how I adhered the twine to the ring. Once I started, uh, when I started wrapping it, I started the knot with some of the liquid glue just to hold it until I could get the wrapping started. And I did that all off camera. So, and watercoloring the flowers, I completed that off camera as well because you guys get the picture I showed you the first part of coloring the inside pink. So the inside of those flowers is going to be magenta and then it'll fade to blue and then teal or turquoise. And I really like the fact that I could custom make the flowers to match the Dear Lizzie Stay Colorful line. Now see here's the finished teal one and I didn't do them all the same. I just created a variety. So this one is the turquoise one. And there's a little bit of variation. I like that when you use the water brush it 
doesn't color the whole flower the same shade. So there's some light and some dark areas, which I, I really like how it, how it looks at the end. And you're going to think it's messy when you're painting it, but let it dry. It's like all watercolors. It looks a lot better once it dries. So I'm going to adhere this with some score tape because, and you could also use American Crafts red line tape. Any really high tack adhesive would work here because you are adhering it over the twine. So it's adhering over a fabric. Now you can see how that finished floral there with the magenta in the center and then blue and then turquoise turned out. And I, I think those are my favorite. I really like these right here. So we're just going to adhere along the top portion and cover that striped baker's twine. And I also added some just white glitter to give your eye a little place to rest and to divide between the cobalt blue and turquoise flowers and the one turquoise flower in the center. Just to give some more interest. And here are the glitter flowers that I colored the magenta. And you can see I went right over the glitter, but you can still see the glitter, so it actually works on these glittered flowers. You just have to soak it on whatever surface you're coloring it on and let it dry. So I'm using the score tape and folding it over just so you can't see the adhesive. And here's the finished, what it looks like with the flowers all adhered. Now I'm going to use the Vicki Booten Mixed Media White Foundations Paper because it's 140 pound and I love this paper. Like I think I've seriously used this for all of my last last five projects. So here you can see I've added some of the Dear Lizzie Stay Colorful die cuts from the die cut pack. And here's the Stay Colorful project pad, the 12 by 12 project pad. And I really like this because it has the gold foil. So I am thinking right now that I want to use that one, the aqua and gold, and the gold will be for the unicorn horn. And then this teal one is really pretty. That goes with my color scheme there. You can see it really matches the florals in the shot there. And then I also want this blush and gold. That'll be for the center of the ears of the unicorn. And then I believe I get the cobalt blue. Yeah, there we go. The cobalt blue matches that camera. So you can see that the camera has the three colors from my color scheme. It has the cobalt, the magenta and the turquoise. So what I'm doing now is I am freehand drawing some feathers. I know there's cut files but I have a sketch pad where I had drawn my own. Um, I drew a tattoo for my sister, a tattoo, <laughs> a tattoo for my sister to get, a custom tattoo and she got that. So I have a sketch pad where I had drawn some dream catchers before so I'm just gonna hand draw these feathers and I'll cut fussy cut them out and I'm drawing I like the project pad because the back of the paper is white so you can draw on it and then cut it out and you don't have to erase obviously because you can't see the back of the paper so I'm just gonna draw three out of this turquoise or dark teal in different sizes and I like doing this because I could do it on my silhouette, but I, f I found that I just wanted a certain scale. Like it, I can only have a certain spot down there at the bottom, so I, th I didn't want them to be too big. So these are custom, and of course you can make them any size you want when you hand draw them. So. And you can see I'm following on along the lines of my detail scissors, and I'm just cutting into some of the sections to give like a little division and some texture on the feathers. And also what I'm going to get do to add some more texture is I'm going to use an embossing tool and emboss down the center so you'll see that center vein, like the quill of a feather. So all of them will get that center embossed portion. You see I'm, I'm doing that right now. So once I get these cut out, I'll do three different colors. And once I get them all cut out, then I will use the detail scissors and cut into and create sections to make it look like a feather.
So here you can see I'm using the extra leftover from a previous project, the Vicki Booten Mixed Media Art White Foundations paper, the art paper. And I'm just freehand drawing the unicorn ears and the gold. I'm going to just freehand the horn there. And you can see I'm just doing a spiral, sort of spiral on the back. And the reason I'm doing that is because I will emboss and then hand stitch. So I kind of wanted to know where the spiral little thingies would go. So I'm just cutting this out, fussy cutting this. That way I could make sure that it looked like I wanted it to look. So there we go. That looks like a unicorn horn. It'll look more realistic once I emboss the little line, the spiral looking lines onto the back. So this pink and gold dot paper from the Dear Lizzie Stay Colorful line is going to be the inside the inside the ears of the unicorn. So I drew around the white piece that I had already cut out and then I just cut a little bit smaller piece. So I'll flip that over and do the other one. I'll trace around that so that they're the same shape and same size. And just cut the other one for the other ear that way. So that way we'll have two. And I'm going, you'll see that I'm going to move it down and fold it over so that the ear will stand up off the background a little bit. Yeah. And then I'm just placing them so that they kind of will be the same size. And then I use my hand to kind of curl up the paper so the unicorn ears look a little bit curved and they'll stand up off the background and look more realistic. I'm just erasing the pencil lines. There we go. And I did flip over the other ear just so it would look like it was the opposite ear. And trace it. That's a little trick we find that you guys know how to do that. So you can see how that one stands up off of the background because I kind of used my fingers as a burnishing tool to kind of curl the paper. Now I'm just using my American Crafts This to That adhesive to stick down the center portion of the ears. And I really like that this has some gold foil on the ears because there's the gold foil on the horn and because they're all from the same line, the Dear Lizzie Stay Colorful line, they all coordinate and they're the same gold. So there you can see I used that embossing tool just to create a spiral look on the horn. And it just looks a little bit more realistic. And now you can also see how I use the detail scissors. Oh, I did hand stitch it just with some white crochet thread. And now I'm going to adhere the ears to the back of the dream catcher there with some high tack, the score tape again. And, oh, what I was going to say about the feathers, you can see all the little detail snips that I took out of the feathers so that they look more, you can almost see the different little, uh, what are those called on a feather? Like, anyway, you know what I mean? Like, it looks feathered. <laughs> so now I'm going to use a liquid glue and adhere the baker's twine to the back of each feather. And I will place these on the background with a pop dot, American Crafts circular foam dot. And I'm just going to eyeball. I want these feathers to not all be the same length, so they're going to kind of look like they're blowing in the wind. They're kind of flowing. I didn't want them straight on the page. I really want a lot of movement at the bottom of the page, so each one of these is going to have a little loopy bit on the baker's twine so that it creates some movement for the eye. And you can see how I kind of lay them on there so they do that just naturally. Okay, so I'm back and you can see what I did to the background. I cut out that unicorn card. I cut out a circle uh, for the title that says, I believe in you. And here's the photo I'm going to be using of me and my daughter. And the Dear Lizzie die cut pack had that little journaling spot and a ticket. So I'm going to tuck that under the photo. And you can see that I have three items on the dream catcher itself and they are adhered to the dream catcher with the Dear Lizzie Stay Colorful clothespins, the glitter clothespins. So I really like that this is a, has some sparkle, you know, it's like unicorny, it's got some sparkle to it. And this Chamel sparkly thickers 
pack also goes with this theme here. And the Dear Lizzie Puppy stickers, there's the cobalt and turquoise and, and magenta, so in this flower puffy sticker I picked out. And there you can see I just wrote my journaling with a Sharpie pen in the turquoise so that the photo would stand out since it's the only black and white thing on the page. And that camera is perfect because it has all three colors from the color scheme. So I have two stars on the page right now but I'm going to add a third so I want like groups of three or odd numbers. And then I'm going to use the clip to clip that on right there. And then you can see the circular unicorn on the left on the Dreamcatcher is from the Chamel Glitter Girl Project Pack. So I combined the Chamel Glitter Girl line with the Dear Lizzie Stay Colorful line. And I like the fact that you can cross over different lines and they coordinate with American Crafts. So here I'm pointing to the three stars. There's kind of a triangle around the photo. So I kind of wanted that mixed media... In the background, I also did that with the Kelly Creates Aqua Brush pens, and I did that so that it would coordinate with the flowers at the top. And I did that around the photo to kind of bridge the gap between that unicorn and the title and the photo. And I like that it also has all, all three colors. And it draws your eye towards the photo. So this was, I had so much fun making this, like this is the most fun I've had. I just let loose and did something different, you know, and I really like it and how much fun it was. So there you can see the colors in the Glitter Girl line from Chamel completely match this. So, And I was going to add this little tiny magenta glitter flower, but I think I, I, enough is enough. So thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate you being here. Here's some still shots, and I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. I've got links down below. Thanks for joining me. Bye!